This was an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. I tried my best and gave it all the gumption I could muster. It is up to you now to finish the job. And I will offer $150,000 to whomever can complete the job. This is what appeared in a letter released by the Department of Justice today from the would-be assassin from the Palm Beach Golf Course. Now, why is much of the legacy media covering up that last sentence? A bounty? Welcome back once again. This is Chris Report. And he assured me that uh, St. Simon's down in Boulders. Folks, this is Chris Wyatt reporting from South Africa. CNN has reported on this story and actually released a copy of the letter, but the National Public Radio site and the BBC, for example, have conveniently forgot to mention that Ryan Ruth placed a bounty on the president's head. Now, ask yourself why, especially given the irresponsible conduct for the Department of Justice, which released the actual bounty letter to the public. That information should have been redacted. Ask yourself why Meritless Garland's Department of Justice did that when, for over 500 days, the Biden-Harris regime and its corrupt Department of Justice conspired to hide the Nashville shooter Audrey Hale's manifesto after the transgender wackadoodle murdered six Christians in Tennessee in March 2023. In Hale's case, the Biden-Harris administration's FBI reportedly encouraged the Metro Nashville police chief to bottle up Harris's confusing writings for fear that they would stoke conspiracy theories. Authorities then suppressed the writings over an alleged ongoing investigation, and a court ruled in July of 2024 that the writings could not be released due to copyright infringement. Seriously? Yet the Biden-Harris regime thought it was a good idea to release the letter placing a bounty on Trump's head, as if that wouldn't inspire copycats or deranged leftists. Seriously? Butler, Pennsylvania. A bizarre loon wanders around for an hour with a rangefinder climbs onto the roof of an unsecured building within easy range of the former president, gets pointed out to law enforcement 45 minutes before climbing onto the roof repeatedly and still manages to nearly assassinate a former president. Countless examples of security laxes and ineptitude were on display for all to see in Butler, Pennsylvania. So many basic measures not taken so as to raise legitimate questions regarding the competence and or the commitment of the Secret Service, Homeland Security, and the Biden-Harris White House for the safety of President Trump. Biden's refusal to provide Secret Service protection for presidential candidate Bobby Kennedy Jr., knowing full well that both his father and uncle were assassinated, speaks volumes about how spiteful Biden is that Bobby Kennedy ran against him, and how dangerous the leftist, out-of-control federal government has become, endangering presidential candidates' lives. Next up comes the Palm Beach cock-up. A would-be assassin lies in wait for nearly 12 hours undetected, in no small measure because the Secret Service cannot be bothered to take simple steps to protect the former president. I don't know, things like walking the perimeter, using overhead surveillance like drones, or using roving patrols. Even though the boundary of the golf course provided excellent concealment for an assailant, these are basic things that infantrymen could figure out. Then a security official says that Trump had limited protection because he's a former president. Folks, you don't decide on levels of protection based on the status or affectation, but rather on the threat level. That is VIP Protection 101. What kind of Keystone cops work for us taxpayers? Only, let's be honest, at some point, we can no longer deny what is becoming painfully obvious. Either there has never been a bigger bunch of losers running our nation and security services, or they're not incompetent, but rather malfeasant and complicit in the intentional effort to leave Trump unprotected. Democrats have tried everything to get rid of the man who endangers the leftist rhino gravy train of craven political power, self-enrichment, and self-aggrandizement. Bogus lawsuits for non-existent crimes prosecute under a unique statute valid for one year with only a single prosecution in the state of New York, that of Donald Trump. The illegal appointment of a special prosecutor to pursue a bogus classified documents case replete with the CNN tip-off of a dawn raid with dozens of federal agents in body armor at a former president's residence where the Secret Service is there. He needs dozens of federal agents. They had visited three times. And those federal agents from the FBI then planted classified markings, cover sheets, and leaked them images to the media. Convictions for non-existent crimes not under the jurisdiction of the state of New York. Well, let's not forget the twisting of the law to make the bogus claim that Trump inflated the value of his estates or his businesses to get a loan from Deutsche Bank. A loan, by the way, that he repaid on time with interest. 
or the $455 million bond that Trump had to post in that case, a number suspiciously close to his reported personal net worth in cash deposits of half a billion dollars. Now, that's money that was no longer available for him to use in his election campaign. By comparison, Bernie Madoff, who defrauded millions of investors to the tune of tens of billions of dollars, had a $10 million bond. Trump paid off his loan on time and had to put up half a billion dollars. <sighs> we could go back to the over 300 lawsuits the Democrats and leftist organizations filed in state courts to overturn existing election law after Trump stunned them back in 2016 or the phony Russia collusion narrative, or lies that Trump prevented arms sales to Ukraine when he actually provided javelins, in stark contrast to Obama who denied Ukraine arms when Russia invaded Crimea and the Donbass, or the lies about Charlottesville, banning Muslims, and so many other complete fabrications. Butler, Palm Beach, releasing a bounty letter to encourage others to attempt another assassination on Trump. This is not happenstance or ineptitude. This is intentional. Now, I'm not claiming the Biden-Harris regime is behind all this, but they certainly appear to be hoping for Trump's assassination. Trump is not only in their heads, but for so many raging loons on the political left, he is their raison d'etre, their entire reason for existence. What would they be without Trump? Well, they are a party with no morals, no values, intent on oppressing Americans and surrendering our hard-earned sovereignty to corrupt international organizations and criminal alien invaders. Why? Well, because they're not bright enough to read, reason, or conduct rational cogent analysis of facts or understand history. Instead, they choose to lie about and distort history. A party that pretends to care about the little guy, but just uses him or her for their own craven lust for power and money, dividing Americans with their race hustling and naked hatred of Christians, men, whites, and any other group that they suddenly deem to be complicit in imagined crimes. Win or lose, Trump will soon be gone from the public scene, either by November 2024, or by January 2029. Neither date can be soon enough for these America-hating loons. But one thing is for certain. When Trump is gone, they will come for you and for me. We've already seen this movie. The abysmal treatment of January 6th accused in violation of human rights. The collusion in violation of the First Amendment by the FBI, the White House, NHI, DHS, with social media companies. The criminal alien invasion of America facilitated by the corrupt Biden-Harris regime. They have eviscerated the Constitution and are coming for patriots. Make no mistake, with Trump gone and the Wall Street New World Order stooge and puppet Kamala Harris in the White House, the fundamental change Obama sought will reach its apex in state oppression, taxation, suppression of the Bill of Rights, and suppression of native-born Americans. Come November 6th, there will be no shining city on any hill. It's game over for liberty and human rights. A dark, dystopian future awaits the entire world, not just for Americans. Presuming, of course, that Trump doesn't win. But hey, we've seen this movie before, too. <laughs> oh, folks, unbelievable. Why in the world would the Department of Justice release a letter calling for assassins to kill Trump with a bounty of $150,000? No. No one's ever going to pay that. It's not like the $50,000 that Saddam promised to the survivors of suicide bombers in Israel. But still, poor judgment or an intentional effort to get the former president killed. You decide. Take care.